I'm John o. Buchanan. How long have you been watching this channel? Well, if you've been with us from the beginning, you will remember episode 23, a classic. We named it after Michael Jordan. It's actually all about groove templates. The idea that what we can do is to take a groove from somewhere and provide a kind of quantized value, which can then be applied to something else. What we're going to do is to take that idea further now by looking at the idea of a groove track, a way of being able to take the feel of a particular slice of information and then apply it to multiple tracks, effectively creating a groove template, but in a much more musical way. Before we get to all of that, let's just actually have a listen to the track we're going to be working on, this little four bar loop of hip hop. Here it comes. In fact, it was running with the click track, so I'll turn that off right now. Okay, so you can see that this loop is made up of a number of different things, and crucially, it's made up of both MIDI regions, this part that I've programmed here for the Brooklyn Fields kit, one of my favorite kits from Drum Machine Designer, and the, um, well, I want to call it the new studio bass, but you might be watching the year 3000, in which case it's been out for a little while. But nevertheless, the studio bass that was introduced with Logic 11, and then we've got a bunch of audio loops that have come from um, Apple loops, which are sitting in the middle, uh, providing some keys and some extra kind of beat elements, and we've got the saxophone down at the bottom too. Now at the moment, everything is kind of just performing to its original groove. Anything that's got a little bit of shuffle in it is shuffling, and anything that doesn't is straight. And actually, in particular, even though it feels like there is a kind of groove to this track, I do want to just draw your attention to the fact that within the Brooklyn Fields kit, everything is actually quantized to a straight 16th grid. Sounds like this. So there's no groove there, no swing, nothing like that. And the same thing is also true in the studio bass, where again, everything is right on the grid. So effectively, those things are actually quite machine-like. What I'd really like to do is to have one track influence the groove of all of the other tracks. But rather than using one of the tracks that's already in my project, that would be far too straightforward. What we're actually going to do is to make a brand new groove all together, which we're going to use as a trigger for these other sounds. So what I've done is to prepare a hi-hat part up at the top from Ultra Beats. And what I really want to do is just to program a running series of 16th notes. And because that is so straightforward to pencil tool, that is what we will do. The verb to pencil tool. Um, all the kids learn it in school these days. So what we're going to do is to just draw four of these 16th notes and then we're going to select them all and we're going to repeat them three times and that will fill in the bar and that's all going to be good. And then what I'm going to do is to repeat that three times and it's almost like there are always four bars of it. Okay, so now we've got a running series of 16ths. And that's quite enough of that. Okay, so we've got our pattern, which is playing here. And what I want to do is to begin to change it. So what I mean by that is that it doesn't help me to have a regular running series of 16th notes, because what that will do is to create a groove template, a grid, if you like, which is already what the Brooklyn Fields kit and the Upright Studio Bass are using. They are using Logic 16th note grid to place notes on the timeline. What I want to do is to take this hi-hat part and turn it into something which has just got its own unique feel. So to do that, what I'm going to do is to come back into my hi-hat part, having created these 16th notes, and what I'm going to do is to manually move them around. Now, if I selected just a regular quantize swing, I would be effectively just already using a groove template which exists within Logic already. These sort of swung values can be applied to MIDI and obviously to audio files as well using flex editing. But what I want to do is to create something which is more unique across all 16 steps. I'm gonna keep the first one exactly on the bar line. And then what I'm gonna start doing is making things a bit late in varying amounts. 
by holding down control, sorry, by clicking on a note and holding down control, what I have a chance to do is to move things, tiny little amounts. And what I'm going to do is to just shift things around a little bit. Some notes are gonna be later than others. I'm gonna leave a couple more or less where they are and others are gonna be sort of much more dramatically late. So effectively, as we move through the series of 16th notes, what we're doing is just pulling things around. Let a couple of them go early as well. But really what I want to do is to have a sort of slightly lazy feel for this groove overall. So what I'm doing is I'm creating a series of 16th notes. And by itself, that sounds like this. Let's get an accurate loop here. Sounds like this. And with the click track, Okay, I'm just going to move this one on beat four back a little bit because it just feels a little bit too extreme. But now we've got a kind of wonky groove and you know me, I love a wonky groove. Okay, but of course I've only edited uh, bar number one. So what I'm then gonna do is to um, edit this. I'm just going to chop at the beginning of bar three. There we go. And then I'm going to repeat it again three times. And again, I'm going to glue it back together. And now we've got the wonky groove happening over all four bars. Okay, so what exactly do I have to do in order to make this my groove track? Well, it works like this. What I'm going to do is to option T. That's our little key command, which brings up a series of buttons for track headers, things that I can add to the track headers here. Amongst the options that are available to me is the groove track. And when I press this button, what happens is we add a groove track to the project. Now, nothing spectacular has happened until what I do is to come up to the top here and then select the track that I want to act as a groove template. Now then, when I press this little star button, this activates and it effectively means, okay, Logic is going to have analyzed those hi-hats, where they fall. And what I'm now in a position to do is to ask the other tracks to follow the rhythm of those hi-hats. Now, to really see this in action, what I'm going to do is to make this a little bit bigger. I'm particularly going to ask you to have a look at the hats part and the Brooklyn Fields part. Are you locked in? Of course you are. OK, so we've made this our groove track. And what I'm then going to do is to select the Brooklyn Fields track. Now, when I click this button, it's going to match the groove track. Literally, it means it's going to look at where the individual hits are within the hi-hat part, and it's going to move this groove. Ready? Here it comes. Now that was exciting, wasn't it? So effectively you can see that the notes have moved. If I turn it off, we can see that they're all moving all the way through the region. So in other words, what's happening now is that the groove of this first track has now been sort of supplanted onto the second. Let's hit them together. Okay, well that sounds quite good. Let's have a look at actually where the MIDI has been placed. And sure enough, we're going to discover that all those little late notes that I added have been put onto this region. Remember, the only one I kept completely in time was the downbeat, which is happening in every single bar. After that, they are following the kind of um, the groove of that hat pattern. Okay, so that's MIDI. We'd expect the same thing, I guess, to happen if I also bring in the bass and I also tick its box. Sure enough, you can see the MIDI is moving here as well. Let's hear it with the bass line. Okay, that's really wonky. I like that a lot. Okay, so what about audio? Well, let's take one of our individual files here. I'm going to select the uh, bit by bit topper, which is here. We'll just solo it so we can hear it. And again, what I'm going to do is to click its um, match groove track button. And what happens is that logic switches on flex time. So effectively, what it's doing is it's allowing the audio to be analyzed, uh, or at least the trigger to be analyzed extremely quickly and then just placed on top of this file. In other words, flex editing is determining where these individual transients are going to be placed. And they should be absolutely in line with each of the slightly wonked out grooves and where I place them. So that's where this was on the sort of second 16th note or the third 16th note of this bar. But because I move that note in MIDI, then of course that's happened to the audio as well. That gives us this effect. And 
And I can go through all of the subsequent audio files as well. Let's come out of solo mode for a second and just tick the buttons for the other tracks. Because what that's going to do is to go through, produce that analysis, and it's going to do it for keys, it's going to do it for um, um, beats, you name it, any file you like. But of course, you also have the option to not check a box. So if I like the original feel of the kind of saxophone that's happening in the second half, and I don't want it to conform to the rhythm, I want it to feel like it's doing its own thing, I can leave that box unchecked. What does that sound like? And in fact, one thing I do want to try is to take the bass back to where it was too. Let's just have a listen to that. Okay, so what actually is happening here? Well, like I said, episode 23 is all about making groove templates. Effectively, that's what Logic has done for us whenever we use the groove track. And to show you what I mean, I'm going to re-enable this, and what we're going to discover is that a quantized value has been assigned to this track, which disappears if I uncheck this box. In real terms, what that means is if I come up here, I'm going to discover that there is a new groove template Episode 23 was all about this function down here, but effectively Logic has created one for us, and it's got this star next to it showing us that it's a groove track, um, a groove that's been created, a quantized value effectively, which is available to this individual track. So what we have a chance to do is to decide how extremely we want to use it. And interestingly, of course, for MIDI, what I'm going to discover is that because it's a quantized value, I'm going to have a quantized strength. So if what I want to do is to say, OK, I do want to retain some of the feel of the original part that I've written, let's say half of that, but I want it to kind of conform to this wonky hat part, I can absolutely do that. It's a quantized value just like everything else. So this is actually a kind of quicker and easier way of being able to rapidly assign both audio files and MIDI files to a particular groove that you might create. OK, now actually, I've been playing with this function for a little while, and there's one little bit of disclosure that I'm going to provide, which might be an issue that you could potentially run into. What I occasionally find with groove templates is that if I make my groove template based on a MIDI region, as I have here, sometimes, for reasons I've never been able to quite work out, only a bar of it will be applied to subsequent audio files. So in other words, what I mean is I can create my wonky hi-hat pattern. I can have it last for four bars, but when I turn on follow groove track in the subsequent tracks, only the first bar moves. And that's really frustrating. If you come across that problem, what I would recommend you do is to bounce your MIDI down as an audio file. The moment it is an audio file, the analysis program seems to be much happier to be working with audio as a groove template generator than MIDI sometimes is. So if you happen to run into that problem, bounce it down as audio and try again and see if that fixes the problem for you. But the great thing about this is it means that you can program any pattern, you can play any pattern in that you like, and you can then use that as a trigger for anything else. Oh, and by the way, just before we go, I can, of course, change any of these grooves around. So if I suddenly decided that I didn't want the hats to be the groove track, I can turn it off. And instead, what I could do would be to say, actually, I want this topper part to be the groove track. I could then switch the hats to follow it, and suddenly the whole groove of my piece changes because a different piece of audio is now providing that foundation. So you have a chance to say, OK, there are different grooves in my project. Which one do I want to give to everything else? It's an amazingly intuitive system. Enjoy it.